You know, for the, for the end of the world happening later on today, it's really nice that so many people made it out here. In July of 2009, I was diagnosed with osteosarcoma, which is a type of bone cancer. Um, a few days after that, I was informed that uh, my position at my job was being eliminated and I was being laid off. It was a rough week. But despite the fact that I had had cancer and lost my job, uh, I was incredibly fortunate. Uh, my, my treatment went well, uh, I had some unbelievable doctors, and I got better. And to be honest, my story could end there, because I'm here. Um, but they put me in front of a microphone and told me I had a few more minutes, so I'll go, I'll, I'll make my story a bit longer. Um, We still work, that's awesome. Like I was saying, there are a lot of cancer survivors who will tell you that during their treatment they became better or stronger people. Um, that wasn't me. Uh, in fact, I hated the person I became when I was under treatment. Um, I used to be very athletic and very active. Uh, I turned into kind of a shell, kind of shrank all up, looked like a skeleton most of the time. I was either sick or angry or depressed. Sometimes I was all three of those things, and I'm sure I was very pleasant to be around. But I put on a strong face, and I had a great support system, so that was something that helped me through. It wasn't until I started to recover that I realized the scope of what I had gone through and what my family and friends had gone through. Um, one of the side effects of the medication that I was under is that it, it sterilizes men. Um, and after I recovered, I took a test and found that... Um, my fertility was affected and that I was told my chances of ever fathering a child naturally were were next to nothing, which that was a very difficult thing for a 25-year-old man to wrap his head around. But I dealt with it because I realized that it was going to take an incredibly, incredibly awesome girl to put up with me in the first place. So if she did, she'd probably be okay with adoption. So I was okay with that. The other side effect of my treatment was that I developed rheumatoid arthritis. It was something my doctor said I probably would have had later on in life anyhow, uh, but because of the strong autoimmune drugs that I was put under, it, it flared up early. So it affected the joints of my ankles and my knees and my fingers, which uh, at its worst, I struggled to even walk around. So I knew that running, something that I enjoyed doing um, pretty much all through high school and college, was probably not going to happen for me anymore. I remember talking with my doctor about running races again, maybe running a marathon someday. And, she, and I remember this very vividly because she looked at me and she said, Mike, there's nothing that says you can't do it, but it's going to be incredibly painful. I don't know why you'd want to. Um, so now fast forward a bit to last October as I crossed the finish line at the Detroit Half Marathon. <laughs> Just over two hours. Uh, it was a little bit uh, slower than I wanted, but I was just happy to finish. Um, my doctor was right. It hurt every step of the way. But I finished it. Um, and I proved her wrong. But that wasn't the only place that she was wrong. Tegan. And, uh, you want to wait? Yeah. <laughs> he was waiting for me at the finish line, maybe my biggest fan that I had there, you know, and this is the son that I was never supposed to father, and he was waiting for me at the end of the race I was never supposed to run. Um, American Cancer Society has this thing with celebrating birthdays, it's, it's fantastic, because this January I'll celebrate my third birthday, cancer free. birthday with a healthy daddy. Now, it's interesting because he was born late. He was born on June 26th. He was about two weeks late. Um, he was supposed to be born in Gemini, but he waited. And he waited inside his mom's belly, and he came out on June 26th, making him a cancer. So it goes to show you that not everything, not everything bad is associated with that word. Sometimes good things are associated with it too. And he's my constant reminder that 
you know, and I owe my life to my doctors, I truly believe that, but he's a constant reminder for me that no matter how brilliant they are, or how dedicated they are, nobody can tell you what you are or are not capable of doing. I appreciate every one of you being here. This means a lot to me and it means a lot to my family. Uh, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Oh, I got, I got her two nieces and a few friends oh. up there too. <laughs>